I would like to also uh, announce to you that uh, women's conference is coming up. So those of you, you're interested to register, kindly register at the book table after the service for the women's conference. Pastor Ashish is traveling. He's in Maharashtra and he will be back, uh, I think, tomorrow. So uh, this morning I'm filling in for him. We're getting ready to do our declaration. So uh, can we turn our Bibles to... The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 6. Every Sunday before the message, we do a declaration. And this is a reminder for us about uh, how important it is for us to speak the right words and how equally important it is for us not to speak the wrong words. Right Here, in this scripture, Luke chapter 17, verse 6, we see here, Jesus is talking about faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Now, sometimes when we encourage people to walk in faith, to speak by faith, that they tell, you know, Brian, I don't have enough faith. Then I ask them this question. So you believe you're saved? Are you born again? They say, yes. Okay, so if you have enough faith to be born again, you have enough faith. Go ahead and put it to work, right? So uh, here in the scripture, Jesus is saying that speak to the mulberry tree. Now, why does why is he talking about the mulberry tree? And when we study this word mulberry tree, we see that you know there are many other references. But this tree is a very common tree in Israel. It's also known as the sycamine tree. Uh, it's also known as the casket tree because they make coffins or caskets with this tree. We see that Jesus saw Nathaniel under a mulberry tree. And, uh, and something transpired between them because just because Jesus told him that I saw you under the mulberry tree, Nathaniel was willing to become his disciple, right? So this tree holds significance. Now here, uh, the thing about mulberry tree is it's just like one of those trees or plants here. Maybe if you do gardening or if you have a yard, there are some plants that grow. You pull it out and after some months again it grows. You know, I have a neighbor, he is trying to have a very beautiful lawn, but the, unfortunately, all the grass that was there before he bought that and he, he placed it, it still comes up after a few months. Again, he removes it. Again, it comes up, right? So some plants are very difficult to get rid of, and mulberry tree is one of them, right? And it is commonly available there, commonly there. It is known as a sycamine tree. Now, the only way you can get rid of the mulberry tree is if you put it into salt water, the root will dry up. It will stop growing. That is the only way it can, dry, it can die. Right here in the scripture, Jesus says in Mark chapter 17, verse 6. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea. It would obey you. He is getting into the details. Right. So this morning, I want to encourage you. Let's say that you're facing a challenge in your workplace. Not only, you know, you don't have to say that, you know, every challenge leave in Jesus' name. You have the authority to step into it, step into that situation. What is causing that challenge? If it is a misunderstanding, speak to the misunderstanding. If it, it is certain indi individuals, you understand that you're not fighting flesh and blood, but the powers of darkness behind it, you bind it. If you are seeing no growth in your work, you go ahead and find out what is limiting that growth. Go ahead and speak to it. Get into the details, right, and speak that. You know, sometimes uh, when I uh, pray for people, they're going for an interview, I declare they are able to get there on time. I declare they are able to uh, get questions they're prepared for. I declare that they're able to give answers. I declare that the answers are pleasing to the person who's asking them questions. I declare and release over them honor and favor. So we can get into the details. God has given us the grace, the wisdom, the discernment, the ability. So this morning, I want to encourage you. Go ahead and put the word of God to work. As you are led in the spirit, as you are quickened in the spirit, take hold of the word of God and go ahead and declare into every situation of your life, to your house, your family, your children, your work, workplace, your business, your, your personality, the, the things that you want to achieve. Just go ahead and speak it. And you will see that the hand of God is coming to pass in those areas of your life. So can we all stand up? Can we hold our Bibles in our hand? Can we go ahead and make a declaration? This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. 
I can do what God says I can do. I can become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ and a channel of his blessings to many people. I receive his word. I believe his word and I live by his word. Christ is my master and to him I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. Kindly say hello to the person next to you. If you don't know them, get to know them. Bless them. May be seated. Again, thank you so much for being here this morning and uh, glad to see all of you here this morning. We are, uh, this whole month, we are looking at how we can fulfill the Great Commission. We keep asking the Lord Jesus for many things. Lord, give me that, give me this. Today I prayed, Lord, give me a parking spot. Help me get here on time. Right? We keep asking the Lord. And the Lord has asked us for, of one thing, and that is the Great Commission. Right? And he told us, go and preach this good news to all creation. Right? I heard the story that uh, um, someone heard, took, took a hold of this word, and he heard that, you know, go and preach this not only to people, but to all creation. He, uh, he started putting up speakers in his yard, in his, in his farm. He has Arakanet farm somewhere in Kerala. And he started preaching the gospel. He recorded the message of the gospel, and he started preaching it nonstop to all these plants, and they gave him a bumper yield. This happened right here in our nation, right? So this gospel must be preached to all creation, right? So we have to do what we have to do, and you and I, we are called to do it. Now, we have, uh, you know, sometimes we limit ourselves by saying, you know, uh, I can't do that, I don't have the time, I'm working. And that is why we encourage as a church, uh, let's get into a lifestyle of evangelism. Let's make this a lifestyle. Let this become uh, a part of us, right? So we are learning about it. This past Sunday, we learned about why it is a necessity so that we preach this gospel and why it is an urgency. Why is it a necessity? Because people need a savior and there is only one and his name is Jesus. There is no other name under which mankind can receive salvation. Why do I say that? Because if there were any better way people can receive salvation, why would this loving God send his only son to go through the gruesome death of dying on the cross? Right? There's no other way of salvation. The only way of salvation is through Jesus Christ. And we also uh, realize it's a necessity because people are empty, they're hurting, they're searching, they are in need, irrespective of if they are rich or famous or poor or needy. They all need a savior. They're all looking for a savior. Right? They all are looking for someone who can help us. People will not know the truth unl unless someone tells them. So this is a necessity that we preach the gospel so that people know about the Lord Jesus. It's also an urgency because people are perishing and they don't know that they are perishing. It's also an urgency because time is running out. You know, just, just now, if I remind myself of all those lovely people in my own family and my own friend, friends list, you know, they are not going to spend eternity with me. That very thought makes me feel terrible, right? So we are living in the midst of that. There is an urgency, there is a necessity. But though we want to do all that we can, we have inhibitions and that stops us from carrying out the Great Commission. And that's exactly what we're going to look at today. We're going to learn together. Now, I was living in an apartment with my family. My son is growing up, and I decided to move into another apartment, which is a bigger facility. Now, the real reason why I wanted to move is because that place has, you know, you can play games. There are there are there is a big park. My child can run around and play, and I can have fun with him. And this is the real reason. But I asked myself, Brian, what is your motivation behind moving to a, a bigger place? Then I told myself, you know, I, I just did a survey, and I found out there are 509 houses in that apartment complex. This is my plan. Every week, I'm going to go visit one family, and I'm going to spend time with them, tell them about the Lord, 
and in 509 weeks i'm going to win this whole place for jesus christ now that was my plan before you clap the motivation was great but the execution was poor you know and a few years down the line when i look at myself i've only done i've only visited a few people now why is it that i'm not able to because i have inhibitions i'm thinking you know what if uh, you know when i when i visit them they tell me no then when i see them how do i face them these are the questions that i have in my mind when the rubber meets the road you know we all have limitations we have inhibitions and that's exactly what we're going to talk about today right you know as a church we are all here for the right reasons right we are all here for the right reasons because our pastor does not give you a call and tell you why didn't you come last week i didn't see you for two weeks he doesn't we are here for the right reasons you gave your life to the lord because you fell in love with him and he loved you first and that is why you are here and we want to serve god with all that we have we are here for the right reasons right and we want to do we want to fulfill his will we want to do what we can for him we want to extend the kingdom that is our motivation but the reality is some of us are able to do it some of us are not able to do it we are not able to do much right though the motivation is there though the heart is there we are really not able to because it's easy to talk about it but not really easy to do it and that i think it is because of inhibitions that we carry so we're going to look at some of the inhibitions that we have and we're going to look at how we can overcome it right and uh, how we can um, we can still go about doing what we are called to do now some of us we say that brian i don't know how i can go and present this gospel to others because i really don't know how to present it right right i don't know how to start i don't know where to ask the question i don't know where to end right so because of that i'm not able to right i understand that sometimes there is a challenge but the bible talks about a blind man now the, this blind man is pretty famous in this locality just like you know some of the the people who ask you for money in, a, in some of the traffic signals they know you very well you know them very well right and if you you keep seeing them every day and uh, some of them they come to you because they know that you will give some of them they will not come to you because they know you will not give right just like that this blind man is pretty famous in his uh, locality and here we see in the scripture um that in john chapter 9 people are coming and asking him so many questions what about the blindness you had we heard that you jesus healed you and you can see now and uh, was it hereditary was it congenital what was it because of a disease were you pretending like you were not able to see what is the reality we want to know they are bombarding him with questions and he gives an answer in john chapter 9 verse 25 one thing i know that though i was blind now i see very simple i was blind now i see so if you want to present jesus you can talk about yourself at some point in time i was lost but now i am found by the love of jesus christ i have a relationship with him at some point i was lost i had no idea why i am here i had no idea what i am supposed to do i was lost i had no meaning for life but today i am having a meaningful relationship with my god now some of us think that this is a very simple thing but it's not because there are so many of our brothers and sisters from different walks of life and if you sit down and tell them that i have a relationship with god which you and i we have if we tell them most of the times they think that we are imagining or we are lunatic because they cannot comprehend that because uh, because in their walk of life in their perspective this relationship with god is unheard of but you and i we carry a real relationship with god right that is because of the presence of the holy spirit that is there in us so it is a great thing so you can talk about what happened to you but do you need to be prepared in order to give an answer uh, for the questions that you and i face yes the bible speaks about it in first peter chapter 3 verse 15 but sanctify the lord in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who ask you for a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear the truth of the matter is everybody is watching us at workplace people are watching you observing you what are you doing how is your response how you are uh, filling up your 
how you're giving your tax bills, what are the bills you're giving. They're looking at everything, right? And they want to find out the reason why you're not doing certain things, right? And if you are going for a work-related party, everybody's watching what is in your hand, right? What is mixed in it? They want to know it's because they are always judging the people of the Lord. They are. Whether you know it or not, they are, right? But here, you know, somebody is asking you, why is it that you don't want to stay back very long? Why is it that you don't want to uh, do that or take part in that? Be ready with an answer. Why you don't want to do what you don't want to do, right? Or be ready with an answer for the faith that you carry because the scripture encourages us, but sanctify the Lord in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. You can talk about your own story, your own life. The second reason why we are not able to go ahead and do what we are called to do is because we assume that people are not spiritual. We think only the people in the church are spiritual. Yes, I understand. Occasionally when you talk about God, some people may tell you you are becoming very philosophical. I understand that. But still, Bible says that God has put eternity in everyone's heart. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11, it says, also he has put eternity in their hearts. See, all of us, we are tripart beings, whether you are saved or not. There is a spirit, soul and body, right? And you and I, we are, our spirit is in union with the Holy Spirit, but they may not be having an active spiritual life, but they have a spirit. And God has put eternity in everybody's heart. There is a hole in everybody's soul, right? We keep hearing that. And there is eternity in everybody's heart. Let's get into a conversation. We think that somebody is very practical. He doesn't have time for all that. But when we sit down with him, we realize there is a side to that person where he thinks about God. He thinks about the creator. He thinks about why is he created? What is the purpose for which he is put here on the earth? He has those questions in his mind, in his heart. Right? So people are innately spiritual because God has put, uh, God has put eternity in everybody's heart. So if, if someone, some of you are thinking, if I'm thinking that uh, people are not spiritual, that's why I don't want to talk about God, let us also realize that everybody has a spirit, right? And uh, God has put eternity in everyone's heart. Sometimes we don't want to talk, we have inhibition, because we think that will people be convinced, right? Will people be convinced? Because, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about God, Will they be convinced? Will I be able to give them a good answer? Right? Sometimes we think that what if they ask me a very tough question? I may not be able to answer. Now here is the thing. Let's say that even if we prepare, read all the frequently asked questions, be ready with the answers, go and try talking. What if they ask you something else? Again, no answer. Right? It's perfectly fine uh, to say one answer that will satisfy most people. Right? Most questions can be answered. And that answer is, I don't know. Right? It's, it's okay for, for us to tell them, I don't know for some of the questions. Because here is the point. You may be very well read. You may have all the answers. You may even be able to win an argument. But that does not help us. We are not called to win arguments, but we are called to win hearts. Right? I know I've, I've engaged myself in this whole academic exercise of talking about God in an intellectual uh, manner. But uh, unfortunately, th those discussions are going on even after three, four years. So we need to realize we are not here to win an argument, but we are here to win hearts for Jesus. It's okay for us to say, I don't have all the answers, right? But I can get back to you with a better answer, but I can also pray that God answers you. What we do not realize is that who's, uh, who has given the Great Commission to us? The Lord. He has given the Great Commission to us. So sometimes we think that we are in this alone in order to go and make this Great Commission come to pass. No. He is with us. We do 50%. He helps us 50%. He tells us what we should speak. He prepares the heart of the person. He prepares, he opens their heart, he opens their minds, he draws them to him. You know, sometimes I keep speaking, I'm like, am I making sense? I don't know. But after I finish, some people come and say, okay, that made sense. You know, sometimes I'm like, I'm prepared to give a sermon, a message. I have this point and this point and this point that I want to give. 
but I forgot all those good points and I said something else and I finished it and later I'm thinking, why didn't I speak about that? That was a very good point. You know, then someone comes and tells me, what you spoke really made sense. Right? So it's in our own thoughts and imaginations. We think that, you know, only if this and this happens, then only th those people are spoken to. You know, some years back when I was here at Central Church, I would try to bring the people I'm working with to the church, right? And that particular Sunday, I'm like, okay, oh, unfortunately, this Sunday, the topic is this. So I think my friend really did not get it, right? And the uh, topic is very different and did not make any sense. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm feeling a little not so great, right, sitting in the church. And after the service is over, I'm asking him, so what happened? Did you like the church? And he's like, yes, that really spoke to me. Right? So we never know because Holy Spirit has a way of drawing people. Sometimes we spe I speak in church and someone comes and tells me, Brian, you said that. God really spoke to me about it. I'm like, when did I say that? Right? Because the Holy Spirit knows how the word should speak to people. It can connect with their life. It can connect with the words that you use. It may speak to them. It may speak to their background. It may speak to a pressing prayer they are praying or a need they are going through in their life. So let's not discount the Holy Spirit. It is as much as you know, we are desiring to bring about a change in someone's thinking, he also desires that. And he will do that. And he takes pleasure in partnering with you and me. So do we need to worry about whether people will be convinced? No, we shouldn't worry about it because we are only doing 50%. The Holy Spirit is also drawing people to him at the same time. The gospel is the power of God. The message of the cross is the wisdom of God and the power of God. We see that gospel is the power of God for man unto salvation in Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Gospel has power. We also see that the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts them of sin, righteousness and judgment. And the Holy Spirit will do his part even as we are uh, going ahead and speaking to people. Sometimes we don't want to uh, go ahead and talk to people because of the fear of rejection. Just like I mentioned about myself, what if I go and share the gospel and what if they reject it, right? And then I'll feel very sad. You know, my career started right after engineering by selling uh, software products. Right? And, um, and when, I was, uh, when I would do that and you engage with people, you explain to them, and all of it, the capabilities, and why it is better than this and that, right? And sometimes they get into the next uh, conversation, the next level. After all that is over, they, they may say, you know, um, okay, okay, thank you for your time. Uh, we will, I don't think we want to go ahead. We're not interested. Maybe we'll look at it after two, three years. And you feel very deflated right at that point, right? And that is when you realize, you know, um, and, and you feel, sometimes you feel rejected. So the manager that I was reporting to at the time told me, Brian, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the product that you are pitching. Right? Sometimes we need to understand it. We see in the scripture, Jesus speaking to the people who are going to represent him in Matthew chapter 10, verse 11 to 15, and also verse 40. In verse 40, uh, I'll, I'll read from uh, verse 11. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you or know hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. He who receives you receives me. That is verse 40. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. So if they receive the message that you're preaching, they receive him who sent you. If they reject the message you're preaching, they reject the one who sent you. Are we getting it? Right? It's not you or me they are rejecting. You know, I was just uh, uh, reminded of this. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, we see, uh, you know, when we look at our bank statement, we see a wrong charge. Or when we look at our telephone bill, we see a wrong charge. And now telephone calls, are, uh, mobile calls are unlimited, but sometime back, right? We see some calls... Uh, or some charges we shouldn't have been charged. And we, we feel like, I need to question it. This is not right. So you pick up the phone, you make a phone call to the customer service, and you speak to, let's say, someone called Mohan. Okay? And you're speaking to him, and he's telling you, no, you made these charges, these charges are yours. You browse the internet, these are the charges. 
and all of it and charges are exorbitantly high and you're in no mood to pay it so you're arguing with him no 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 this is not my charges i didn't use it and he's telling you no you used it you're not telling the truth you feel very offended and you get into an argument with him and then you finish the call and you're like you're telling your friend you know what this company is really bad and i'm going to disconnect my service from them you also should disconnect this is not good right now here is the point the company didn't tell you anything it is a person who works in the customer service department that you had an argument with he did not treat you right right but are you saying mohan from this company is very bad no you hardly say that you say the company is very bad right so we need to and mohan is on the next call arguing with the next customer during the whole time so we what we need to realize is that you know they are rejecting the message and not the person who is carrying the message so we need to we need to tell the lord lord i understand i am your messenger i'm speaking for you on your behalf but i understand i am not the one getting rejected right and we shouldn't take the rejection to ourselves but we should realize that it is um, and of course we can learn to respond graciously even when we come across those words of rejection now uh, I, i'm just reminded of this incident that happened some years back that time when um, i was a youth pastor at apc south now uh, at that that year that around 5 years back or more than that maybe around 10 years back yeah so uh, we had a youth camp and that youth camp was about how uh, we can bring about transformation in the city and uh, and we we were right in the city that's when maybe we have in the youth camp and some of them some of the young people decided you know there are different different sets of people and different different ways of doing things and uh, one set is called the evangelists right and some of the young people some of our young people some of them are still here so they decided they're going to do something called bus evangelism right our own people in our own church in our own city now uh, they got into the bus now this is the plan they will get into the bus from shivaji nagar and they will sit in the bus and go till the last point of the bus and the bus will stop there for a long time and this same bus will return back to the bus station so they're going to spend the half day a half of the half of a day uh, doing this so they will sit and they will take seats and whoever comes and sits next to them they will talk to them about jesus now here is the plan right and uh, and uh, they started doing it and uh, you know after the day got over they came back and they're giving reports so i'm listening to roshan philip he's telling the whole story so he is sitting and others are sitting uh, and people will come and sit next to them they'll say hello and they'll uh, they'll and the other people will say hello after that stop nothing happens right then they are like okay we need to innovate now then uh, they're like hello how are you and they say how are you had your tiffin yes thank you bye <laughs> <laughs> then they're like okay we need to do something then they're trying to improvise because they want to get into real conversations because that's when they can talk about jesus right and uh, finally so roshan is coming back and telling me so by, buddy finally one guy came and sat next to me i said hello he said hello i said how are you he said how are you i said uh, great can i talk to you he said of course can i also talk to you he said yes and so they got very excited so he, the whole people three or four of them they are they are now sitting with this man the bus stopped because it at least reached the last point and they want to sit down and they want to present jesus to him because he's the only guy who showed interest right and um, he said i would like to ask you some question do you believe in god what about eternity what about heaven and hell he said i also have some questions so roshan said okay you ask first what is your dream how much money do you want to make i have a great product why don't you join my multi level marketing business <laughs> so rejection is part of life right sometimes we come across rejection but the fear of rejection shouldn't stop us from doing what we are called to do right and uh, uh, the the truth is that many people who rejected initially eventually came to encounter him very powerfully in the bible itself right so it's perfectly all right if we come across a rejection we move on to the next per- person now another reason why we don't want to go and present this gospel to our, our people in our lives to our friends to people we don't know is because of the fear of persecution this is real right and uh, though we do not hear so many stories of persecution within the city of bangalore but it is a reality in our nation right 
and uh, uh, but we should also re recognize what is real persecution and what is not we see in matthew chapter 10 the lord sends his 12 disciples and he warns them that persecution will come right and he says that in this world you'll have trials you'll have tribulations there'll be challenges but take cheer because i have overcome the world right so the lord says yes there will be difficulties that are associated with our lives here. Bible also says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, he instructs them to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. That means we should not be foolish and we should not unnecessarily attract trouble. We must not provoke or antagonize people when we go about sharing Christ. But Bible clearly teaches us, do not fear even in the middle of a persecution. Right? And, uh, you know, I come across situations like this sometimes when we are working uh, you may see differential treatment sometimes but sometimes the differential treatment is uh, an imagination of our own mind right and uh, when i was working in oracle i remember this story where uh, someone another fellow christian joined uh, and uh, he told me brother uh, we you and i we are facing a lot of persecution in the company and uh, you know and we do not grow only other people get promotions and in my mind i'm rejecting those words i cancel those words in jesus name why because i'm just waiting for my promotion that's just happening <laughs> right so sometimes it's a it's a it's an imagination some people think that you know um, i'm getting persecuted at work because i'm a christian see the same bible also talk about talks about a spirit of excellence you and i we've been given a spirit of excellence to be the best that we can in our workplaces the bible says that those who are skilled will stand before kings what does that mean that means we will stand before directors and vps that means you'll report to them you'll grow in the company and look at the bible joseph has an ungodly boss but he became the second in charge daniel had an ungodly boss he became the second in charge right so we need to recognize that uh, 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 we should not allow our mind to imagine persecution but there are real persecutions that happens but even in the middle of it we should take our heart we should cheer up and we should know that the lord is in this with us right and we should not fear it the bible teaches us he tells them not to fear in matthew chapter 10 verse 28 and verse 31 and bible also promises in matthew chapter 10 19 to 20 he promises them the work of the holy spirit who will give them the right words to speak at the right time so all these are the promises that are given to us by the lord Bible also says that if we acknowledge him before men, he will acknowledge us before the Father in heaven. Right? So some of you, you may be going through a difficult time right now. And uh, I just want to encourage you to take heart, be cheerful because, and Lord tells you, do not fear it. And you will overcome it because he will help you come out of that. Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Verse 8 says, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings of the, for the gospel according to the power of God. So uh, this verse talks about us sharing the Lord Jesus. right? And even in, during those times, we should not have a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the, for the, for the Greek. Right? So we see here that uh, the Bible says, yes, some of these inhibitions are there in us. But Bible also gives us solutions, answers on how to overcome it so that it does not uh, have a grip over us and limit us from what we are supposed to do. Sometimes we have other excuses like, I am not very strong. I'm unsure about my own faith and relationship with the Lord. If you are listening to me and you, uh, I just described you, I would like to encourage you. Why don't you take a stand right at this moment? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus? If you say yes, that's great. If not, then you, know, where you, you understand where you stand, that you need a savior. The reason why you're sitting here is because the Holy Spirit is drawing you. And he wants to share with you. He wants to speak to you. And you see that hand of God working in your life. Sometimes we have, we make excuses like, you know, I don't know what I should do first. Someone has called me for, uh, for because they have some discomfort or disease. 
I, they call me to pray. So what should I do first? Should I preach the gospel first and then heal? and Or should I heal first and then pray for healing and then present to them about Jesus? Now, from my experience, you know, we just need to go and pray for them. And when they see the goodness of the Lord, they themselves will be encouraged to receive Jesus into their life. Right? So we should, we should just encourage ourselves and uh, look at the excuses that our mind makes up. Sometimes we'll be like, I don't have time for this. That is why we should make it a part of our lifestyle. You know, I, I know someone who's very dear to me. She told me, now I have children and grandchildren. Now I want to just go and do the work of the Lord. I want to leave everyone behind and leave and go. I'm like, leave everybody and go where? Right? And, and, and where can you go? Because, uh, because, and how much we can go ahead and uh, do this work, right? Uh, because people we, are, we have in mind to go and share the gospel, they're also working, they're also busy, they also have limited time to spare, right? We don't have to do or make such radical decisions or wait for that major grand day to come where we stop living and leave the house and go out and preach the gospel. No, we can make it a lifestyle. We can make it our life. So we can spend some time in a week. We can uh, give some hours in a week or in a day. And we can do this and make it part of our lifestyle. That is why we are focusing on lifestyle evangelism. How we can make, how we can make this a lifestyle. Sometimes uh, I don't have access to unsaved friends. We need to step out of our comfort, comfort zone and we should go out and make friends. Sometimes uh, I don't feel stirred up about this. I don't really have any passion for the unsaved. I don't have any burden. If that is the case, we can ask the Lord. Right? Let us, uh, let us quickly make a mental list of the people in our own family uh, who are not going to spend eternity with you. Right? And let us think about those big people. Let us think about our best friends who are not going to spend eternity with us. And if we are still feeling comfortable, if we don't have a burden for them, then ask the Lord, Lord, I feel something is wrong. I really don't have burden for them. Give me a burden. And the Lord will give you a burden. right? Or if you already have a burden, ask him, Lord, what do I do about this burden that, I, that you have given me? Now, I remember in uh, 2010, um, when I was uh, working with Oracle, I was staying in JP Nagar, uh, seventh phase. There's another part of the world. Not from here, maybe. but uh, um, And then... Um, I would be attending APC South, and uh, I was going to. I was working with Oracle, which is in Banergata Road. Now, uh, for some strange reason, we were told that me and the division that I am part of will work out of the Oracle Hexaware office in uh, Whitefield, that is somewhere near IT ITPL, right? And all of a sudden, now they p they give pick up and drop. All of a sudden, I'm traveling for more than an hour, all the way from JP Nagar to Whitefield. Right? And I'm staying in JP Nagar. Now, uh, that is uh, around 2010, uh, late 2010. And uh, I've been to Whitefield uh, maybe five years before that. But all of a sudden, I'm seeing a new Whitefield. Right? All of a sudden, I'm seeing very tall buildings, high-rise buildings, so many apartment complexes. And, uh, and, uh, and I'm actually living a very free life because... 2009, I got married. I'm still in the excitement in 2010. And, but all of a sudden, I'm feeling a very strong burden. I'm like, where is this burden coming from? I really can't understand. But so much of burden. I'm thinking, what about all the people who are living in these high-rise buildings? They don't know Jesus. If they don't know Jesus, they're going to perish. Who is going to preach the gospel to them? Does everyone know there are so many high-rise buildings in this part of the city? This is 2010. Now, we see high-rise buildings everywhere in the city, right? I'm having so much of a burden. So the next day I'm passing by the same area. Again, this comes up. Right? And I'm, I, I, I can't understand what I'm going through. Right? Because I really, um, I, have, I have not felt this kind of things before that. Right? So I really can't understand. And I'm thinking, who is going to preach the gospel to the people who are living in these buildings? Right? And then, uh, and then uh, I had to, I, I fell ill and I, I stopped working. I took a break and uh, the story ended there. But around 2012, Pastor Ashish wrote to myself and Deepti, my wife, and asked us, if you want to be part of the church planting team for Whitefield, 
right? I did not recognize, I did not correlate what happened in 2010 to what is happening in 2012 and all of it. But the Lord just revealed that to me just, just a year back. I'm realizing that he gave me a burden for the people, for that locality, because his heart breaks for that locality. And God uh, ordained my steps and he opened a door for me, gave me an opportunity to go and serve in that part of the city. My question today is, do you really have burden for those people in your family who do not yet know the Lord? What about those, those your, some of your friends, some of the people that you end up meeting every single day, some of the people that you work with? If you don't have a burden, ask the Lord, Lord, give me a burden. Right? And he will give that to you. And he'll also give you wisdom and discernment, opportunity and grace to make that burden, you know, become... Uh, to take an action based on that burden. Right? Or you can ask him, Lord, you know, will you uh, tell me what is that you, you want me to do? What is my great commission associated with? Is it a people group? Is it a language speaking group? Is it a part of the this city? Is it a part of the state? Is it a part of this nation? Speak to me. I'm open to it. Because we are here for the right reasons. You and I, we are here because we love God, not for any other reason. Right? So we can ask him and he will reveal that to us. I want to encourage you to ask that question to the Lord. Now, sometimes we think that it is just not my personality type to do this. Right? The good news is you may be a rare personality, but there are many rare personalities like you who God can use. Right? In order to reach out to the people. Now, this is our responsibility and we are all called to be witness of, t of the Lord. And sometimes we think, I don't think this is my calling. This is not my responsibility. right? We need to recognize that this is a commission that is given to everyone. Sometimes we say that I'll just live a good life. right? But the Bible says that every believer, or as a church we believe, every believer is a minister. You and I, we are the royal priesthood. right? And we are called to preach and tell this gospel. right? Now, uh, you know, we can have our own excuses and we can have our own set of inhibitions right but the reason why you are listening to this message today or the reason reason why god is speaking to you today is because he recognizes that there are inhibitions that people carry right it may be the inhibition that you're carrying today maybe that you don't know how to present the gospel you don't know what the gospel is if yes you can ask him, Lord, what do I tell? You can tell your own story. Sometimes when we start telling our story, we start in 1986, right? And this happened, and then this happened, and then I had to travel there. And when people get bored or if they, they, they stop you in between, you get offended. No, we should, you know, some years back, Pastor Ashish was teaching us how we can have a short version of a testimony, right? A 30-second one, a one-minute one, a two-minute one. You tell your story. You know, I was like this, but today... I am like this. Then they will ask you, okay, tell me more. What happened in 1986? Then you can get into the detailed story. right? So we need to make it interesting. We need to present it very well. If we can't uh, start, you know, sometimes we are like, okay, what happened is God first created the Garden of Eden. Then he created Adam and Eve. And then this happened. You know, sometimes we want to get into the details. Now, if you have time and they ask you for it, you can get into details. Otherwise, we can make it very simple and interesting. And we can talk about ourselves. Sometimes uh, it's assumption that people are not spiritual. That's my excuse. I think others are not spiritual. But we need to recognize, Bible says, God has put eternity in everybody's heart. That means everybody is spiritual. Sometimes it's like, will people be convinced? What if I cannot give them a good answer? We need to realize that we are not doing this alone. The Holy Spirit is with us and he will help us. He will speak to those people even before we speak to them. But we need to speak to God about those people before we speak to the people about God. Right? Definitely, we need to do what we need to do. Sometimes it's a fear of rejection. If that is the case, we need to recognize they are not rejecting you and me. They are rejecting the message that we are bringing out. Sometimes it is a fear of persecution. The Lord tells us, even in the middle of it, he, I will help you and I will put the right words in your mouth, but do not fear. So we need to tell ourselves, I am not going to... Uh, heed to this voice of fear, but I'm going to stand strong even during this. Sometimes it is other set of excuses, but we need to tell ourselves that the Lord has given a great commission to us, irrespective of how we are, whether we are 
full time or part time or not doing anything or no time this is a, a lifestyle that we uh, he has given us and we can choose to live out this lifestyle and this is a lifestyle that we are choosing to live out now if we seek him and ask him he will give you ideas right and every day you have to have lunch ask the lord lord who should i have lunch with let's say you in your workplace you have to have lunch anyways right and some of you uh, most of you are working who should you have lunch with you decide on monday and tuesday i'm going to have lunch with this person sit with that person have lunch with that person talk to that person get to know the know the person right so that he himself or she herself will ask you questions right let's say that um, uh, you know you have to take breaks you take you decide who do you want to take break with anyway you have you're taking break so decide who do you want to take break with and be the salt and light in the life of that person you're going to take break with right so i just want to encourage you god has got uh, god has already given you and me this great commission and it's just a matter of our willingness and telling him lord i am willing right will you help me will you show me will you advise me will you give me discernment will you give me words of knowledge will you allow me to pray for this person and will you answer the prayer and he will do that because he is looking for people who are willing to become vessels and he is not looking for perfect people he is looking for imperfect people like you and me now when i um, when i was an oracle i had this great burden right and i want to start a fellowship in this company and uh, uh, so i uh, i prayed and god gave me some uh, very simple key ideas or thoughts one of them was you find somebody who you can partner with because even if there is nobody else two of you are there right so i found someone god gave a friend and uh, we decided okay we're going to start a prayer fellowship we started a prayer fellowship then god gave me some ideas ideas were like every day irrespective of whether you are on a call or whether you are busy or not we will meet at the same place at the same time two rules uh, 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 there's uh, one rule is same place same time right same place same time so no change right even if i am not there the other person will be there same place same time and uh, in oracle there are so many empty places uh, empty corners here and there and we decided one spot every day same place same time right and then we decided uh, that uh, another decision that i made the, uh, an idea god gave me is you start praying in the name of jesus you end your prayer in the name of jesus the reason is because you really don't know who is coming right and all kinds of people come and uh, and because the lord led you to start uh, and uh, in, in to honor his name so we decided that right so that is those are the only two rules same place same time second one you start praying in the name of jesus and you close it with the lord's prayer in the name of jesus right so we started doing it and uh, we started seeing all kinds of people join this prayer fellowship right and uh, did the directors knew about it yes they knew about it did the vps know about it yes they knew about it do they know who is the one who's doing it yes they knew about it did i face any questioning any problem never i was there for close to 6 years and it continued even after i left stronger and better right so is it possible for lord to use you and me yes what do we need to do show a willingness lord i am willing what is that you want me to do he will give you ideas he will give you thoughts he'll give you partners he'll give you friends that you can depend on trust and he will make that happen the key thing is it is not your work it is the work of the lord so this morning my question to you is what is the burden that you are having in your heart in your mind who are the people god is showing you right now that you should reach out to show love to who are the people that you want to hang out with spend time with have lunch with if it is your workplace anyway you're carrying lunch you can carry some extra food sometimes you will wonder why are you doing this right so i just want to encourage you have a real burden if you don't have a burden ask the lord to give you a burden he will give that to you because his heart breaks for people 
that are there in your life. And our heart can break for what breaks his heart. So this morning, uh, can I encourage you to think about those people? Can I encourage you to, uh, you to go ahead and make a mental note, a mental list of what is that you want to do with this message that you heard this morning? Yes, we recognize we all carry inhibitions, but the Bible has solutions on how we can overcome these inhibitions. Can I ask all of you to stand? We're going to pray for the next few minutes. And we are about to do something and take a step of faith. And we're going to close with a good surprise. But this morning, let's take a minute and reflect on what we just heard today. Lord, I want to thank you and I want to praise you for bringing us here this morning. And thank you, Lord, for speaking to us and reminding us about the only thing that you have asked us to do, to go and preach this good news. Father, we show our willingness to you. We want everyone around us to know about you. And we get so excited and so happy when we hear about stories and testimonies of people knowing the Lord. But we also surrender the inhibitions that we face, the inhibitions that we carry. At this time, we surrender that at your feet. We ask you, Lord, that you equip us so we can tell our stories in a very interesting manner so that we know how to talk about this message of salvation. We ask you, Lord, that you Help us overcome the assumption that people do not understand spiritual things because you have put eternity in everybody's heart. We ask you, Lord, that you partner with us even every time that we reach out to somebody with your love. Holy Spirit, that you help us. We ask you, Lord, that you help us overcome this fear of rejection because it is not us that they are rejecting, but it is they are rejecting you. And Father God, you have a powerful way of bringing them back to you. We commit to you all our fears of persecution, Father God, because you promised us that you will never leave us, never forsake us, that you will give us the grace and the strength. We give to you all the excuses that we carry. We give to you this morning. We don't want to carry them anymore. And we receive this great commission that you've given us. This morning, as you and I, we are standing here, I want to ask you, is the Lord showing you people, pictures, giving you names, thoughts, memories of those who do not yet know Christ? If yes, can you make it a prayer right now? Give them to the Lord. Lord, I would really like my uncle, my brother, my father, my this person, my friend to know you. I ask you, Lord, will you make that happen? Will you send somebody who will carry this message to their life? Or will you give me an opportunity to present it well? Or if you don't have a burden, can you ask the Lord, Lord, can you tell me, this is your plan, this is your commission that is upon me. Will you tell me what is that you want me to do? I'm open. I'm willing. I'm willing to do what I'm called to do. Will you show that willingness right at this moment? And now, can I ask you to take a step by faith? We are dealing today with inhibitions. We all carry inhibitions. Will you take interest and show love to the person 
sitting next to you right now maybe a family member maybe your friend maybe a stranger whoever it is right at this moment will you just say a prayer for them in your heart in your mind and will you ask the lord lord i haven't done this in a long time i really haven't shared this message about you this good news this gospel i really haven't shared will you help me share that will you help me get started can we by faith break inhibitions this morning right here right now can i ask you to go ahead and share the gospel tell them what this good news is to the person who is standing next to you whoever it is can you tell them hey do you know about jesus christ do you have a relationship with jesus christ i understand for some of you it's your family member for some of you is a stranger and the volunteers here i really need your help without you we cannot make this happen there may be people who are not able to do that so the volunteers can go to them they can talk to you can i ask the volunteers to look around you may be seated right now we're just getting into an exercise this message today was about breaking inhibitions like i said i had great motivation behind why i want to go to a place but i had very poor execution this morning whoever is sitting next to you maybe your spouse maybe your family member maybe your friend maybe a stranger can you go ahead and share the gospel with them as if they're going to hear about the gospel for the first time and all the volunteers who are sitting here and there volunteers of this church can i ask you to go and uh, talk to those who are not finding a partner or there's nobody next to them can i ask you to go and sit next to them right now can i ask the volunteers can the volunteers raise their hands yes can i ask you to do that but the rest of you can you just go ahead and preach this good news what is the good news the good news is telling them that jesus christ died for them on the cross and that he will forgive them of their sins and their shame and their guilt very important forgiveness of sins just before you do that i just want to tell you this before you start i'm sorry to interrupt you you know there was this person who was coming to our church at east she came the first sunday very happy second sunday she's very happy she's coming getting prayed over me and my wife we are very excited i am very excited i told her would you like to receive jesus as your lord and savior she said yes i said great you know bible says believe with your heart and confess with your mouth so will you repeat this prayer after me she said yes and i'm about to start and my wife stopped me I said she told me just stop and she asked her do you know jesus died for you on the cross she said when you know sometimes we we really don't give the full picture right so i want you to make a quality christian right now who is sitting next to you they may already be a christian i understand but we are doing this so we are practicing this right will you tell them you know do you have a relationship with jesus would you like to give your life to jesus do you know he will forgive you of all your sins all your shame and all your guilt and make you a new person right now he died for you on the cross when he died on the cross you also died with him on the cross he was in the tomb for 3 days you were with him in the tomb for 3 days he rose again on the third day you rose again on the third day and he's seated with christ in heavenly places you are seated with jesus and you're seated with christ in heavenly places that is real born again will you make a good quality born again christian out of the person who is sitting next to you do a good job do a good job give your best shot let us break our inhibition right now and volunteers can you reach out to those who are sitting alone and you be their listener or you speak to them
sometimes your family members can give you very good feedback receive that feedback correct it sometimes others can give you good feedback to go to those who are sitting alone they don't have anyone to talk to what you're asking me if you can speak the gospel to the chair next to you yes you can because this good news is for all the creation of salvation penetrate through every inch of this hall right now this is the good news that jesus died for you on the cross he rose again on the third day and he's living right now and he's forgiven you of all your sins all your shame all your guilt now that he has forgiven you would you also like to forgive those who have sinned against you Would you also like to forgive those who have hurt you, let you down? Feel free to give feedback on how they can improve. the volunteers to go to those who are not uh, able to join in this activity the reason they are not able to join in this activity is maybe because they don't know jesus yet or they have inhibitions you can be their listener and you can help them overcome it wondering what can i ask question be natural be intentional have genuine concern for the individual make it a natural flow you can ask questions like what do you do where did you study how do you do you spend your leisure time what are your hobbies interest do you consider yourself spiritual if yes why if not why not have you ever been to a church like this or you only seen churches that are beautiful buildings do you know the difference Which school did you study? Do you know the Lord's Prayer? What do you think when you think of God? Is there life after death? Why do you think there is evil in the world? What is Good Friday? Why do you call it good? I am a born again Christian. Do you know what it means? I am baptized. Do you know what it means? We can engage in all kinds of conversations. says brethren if any any one among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins that's exactly what you're doing right now all right so i want to really appreciate you You may be doing this after a long time. Some of you may be doing it for the first time. Some of you may be doing it just another time. But I really want to appreciate what you're doing. This is breaking inhibition. Can we give the Lord a big hand right now for this? Good job and congratulations for doing this. Now let me ask you. Is there anyone is 
there anyone who gave their life to the Lord Jesus for the first time right now? If yes, will you please raise your hand? For the first time you gave your life to the Lord Jesus. You came to know Jesus today. If there's anybody here? If there's anybody here? If yes, will you please raise your hand? Anybody gave their life to the Lord Jesus for the first time today? Any of you were able to bring someone to salvation? Yes. Is there anyone who gave their life to the Lord Jesus and made Jesus the Lord of their life for the first time? Anyone here? Please raise your hand. I don't see any hands. All right. So I'm assuming that all of you are Christian. If you're not, I want to encourage you to give your life to the Lord Jesus. Make him your Lord and Savior. Because when you believe in him, he forgives you of all your sins, makes you a new creation, breaks the power of sin in your life. Now, here is the good news. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, gospel is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. It is the power of God for salvation. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 16 verse 17, these signs shall follow everyone who believes. That they will see healings, they will see deliverances, they will see miracles. In an atmosphere where you have preached the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is power. So right at this moment, this hall is filled with power. Because you have preached Jesus. You have told to each other who Jesus is. There is power in the message of salvation. There is power. So can we all experience that power? Can we all rise up? As the worship team is leading us in worship for the next few minutes, let us experience the power that is associated with the good news of salvation. The Bible says these signs will follow all those who believe. Right? And they will see healings happen. They will see miracles happen. They will see the hand of the Lord come upon them. So can we just join the worship team right now as we are singing? Let us experience this power that is part of the message of salvation.
wonderful name Jesus let's proclaim the name Jesus the name of Jesus the name of Jesus brings deliverance and the name of Jesus sicknesses flee diseases leave schemes and snares of the enemy they fail fears disappear at the name of Jesus the enemy trembles at the name of Jesus and we proclaim the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is authority in the name of Jesus and we call upon the name of Jesus I want to speak to some of you here if you're standing here you're feeling lonely You wish that you receive and you see the comfort of the Lord. You see the plan that He has for you. I want to speak to you because you feel like there is a burden that is upon you, a weight that is upon you that you know it is not from the Lord, but you're not able to break through, come out of it. Or there is a confusion. There's so much of weight and confusion upon you right at this moment. In the name of Jesus, he's bringing you out of that snare. Come out of that snare. Come out of that snare right now. Be free in the name of Jesus. And I command that snare of the enemy to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. I set you free in the name of Jesus. If you're standing here, you have pain in your body, in your joint. You have pain in your body. I want to speak to those who have pain in the abdomen. You have pain in your body and you're standing here as you're calling out the name of Jesus. The Lord wants to see you walk freely. He wants to see you enjoy what he has given you, move around freely and not live with that pain because he delights in you. He comforts you right now. And I command that pain to leave your body in the name of Jesus. I command your pain, leave the body in the name of Jesus. Every joint pain and every pain in the body, especially in the abdomen area, in Jesus' name I command you to leave and do not come back. Right now, if you are standing here, you're hard of hearing. You're not able to hear clearly. You're hard of hearing right now. In the name of Jesus, ears be opened, be made whole in the name of Jesus. I command that infirmity to leave you in the name of Jesus. I set you free from it. Be opened. You're able to hear. 100% of everything that is happening around me in the name of Jesus open ears be opened I want to speak to those you're having an infirmity in your ear in your eye or that affects your vision in Jesus name I command the spirit of blindness to leave eyes be healed be restored like the way the Lord made you in the days of your youth, be restored right now in the name of Jesus. I like to speak to those who are having a problem in the thyroid. In the name of Jesus, I command the thyroid disorder to leave you. Receive your healing and comfort right now. And also your hormones are being restored in the body in the name of Jesus. Be made whole in the name of Jesus.
if you are here with any pain in your body any discomfort or any pain or stiffness in your body right at this moment can i ask the person standing next to you just gently touch them just gently touch them right now can i ask the person who is standing next gently touch can you gen- gently touch the person who is standing next to you beat anybody just touch them just touch them right now in the name of jesus i release over you healing and comfort and i command every infirmity to leave and i release the power of god upon you and i release over you miracles i release over you healing i release over you comfort and i command every pain and discomfort to leave you in the name of jesus be made whole right now receive your healing right now i command the pain and the symptoms to leave in jesus name let the power of god flow and bring healing and comfort upon you and also on the issues that you're praying for i release over you miracles i release over you healing and restoration i release over you peace and joy and comfort and i command every snare of the enemy be broken and be free in the name of jesus father we thank you and we praise you we thank you and we praise you we thank you and we praise you for what you're doing can i ask you to check by faith you know if there is any growth in your body just check if it has disappeared can you check by faith if there is any pain in your body can you move and check if that has left you if you were standing here with uh, a disorder a thought or something in your mind that was challenging you if you are experiencing freedom if yes can you tell it to the person who just prayed for you person who just prayed you can just move around feel free right now feel free church just look at the person who is next to you just look at them and ask them is there any difference is there any difference is there any the pain has left you discomfort has left you a difficulty has left you if yes can i see your hand if yes if there is anybody who sees the hand of god a healing in their body If yes can you please raise your hand okay praise god anyone else any hands if the lord has healed you okay praise god thank you thank you can you just tell the person who just prayed for you thank you because that will really encourage them right and that will bring about a change in that person's life so many things happen today right we learn about inhibitions and we learn about how we can preach the gospel in spite of inhibitions you did a demo of it right here i want to encourage you go out and think about those people give them a call meet with them talk to them and try to present the gospel in ways that you can so that we are effective in what we are doing and remember when you preach the gospel it will follow signs and wonders and miracles it will happen it is normal so i want to encourage you go ahead and pray for them because there is power in the gospel that you preach and you will see the lord is doing it not you or me but the lord is doing it all right so can we give the lord a big hand for today <laughs> father we want to father we want to thank you we want to praise you we give you glory honor and thanks and praise and we ask you lord that you help us to fulfill this great commission even as we are leaving this building we give you thanks we give you praise in jesus name we pray amen the grace of the lord jesus christ the love of the father and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you today and forever thank you so much for being here today and uh, sorry for the delay today and have a great sunday have a great week see you again next sunday those of you you're visiting us here for the first time mm-hmm.